Ooh, does that not look fun? Yeah. No, not really. Totally. Not really at all. Well, if we look back at the, the notes that I just gave you, what's the first thing you might want to do? Yeah, you're going to force it to factor. Who said that? Good job. You're going to force it to factor. What number am I trying to divide out in this case? The two. The two. Very good. That's our B, right? We want to factor out the B. So go ahead and make it happen. I'll write on the board as you write on your paper. Factor the B out. The three doesn't change. I want you to write it like this. What should the first thing be? X. Yep. It's always going to be X, right? Because you're going to factor that B out of there. It's still going to be a plus. You're not changing the sign at all. Now, is it going to be pi, pi over 2, or pi over 4? Because you're dividing out another 2. Does that make sense? Yes. If you do this, if you do uh, pi over 2, which is what you have, divided by 2, which is factoring, factoring is division, what this is is pi over 4. You reciprocate and multiply. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Pull that out, reciprocate, you're going to get 1 half times pi over 2, that's going to be pi over 4. Now, let's write out everything that's meaningful about this statement right now. I want the amplitude, so go ahead and do that. I want the period, so go ahead and do that. That's given by your B, remember. And I want, to, I want you to determine what type of shift this is and by how much. So write out the amplitude, write out the period, and write out the shift. Just think, if you live at home with your parents and you go home and do your homework, and they're like, hey, can you help me with this? You're, no, I'm taking care of some serious shift right now. Right? That, that'd be a good line. Please, someone try that. <laughs> Let me know if it works. I always was thinking of those excuses when I was a kid. And I just, none of them ever worked. I wasn't that smart. You guys, now I'm giving you all the hints. OK, amplitude. How much is your amplitude? Three. Good, you all got that, right? Absolute value three is three. <clears throat> The period is 2 pi over the B. That's the number that you just factored out. So what is our period here? Pi. Yeah, you're right. I almost wrote it right there. <laughs> equals pi. All right. The shift. Now, the shift. Is this going to be a right shift or a left shift? What do you think? Left. Yeah, even though it says plus, you, your brain wants to think it's to the right, right? But it's not. It's to the left. This you can think of as it's speeding up, it's happening sooner. That's moving to the left according to the timeline. Or if you think about the definition of what a translation really is, it's minus a negative translation. So that is definitely to the left of pi over 4. Okay, well we got that. I'm going to show this to you. You can graph this with only one graph, all right? But I'm going to show this to you as the original function. This is how I think about it. I think about the, the original function. I think about the amplified. And this is going to be a compressed function. And then I deal with the, with the shift. Because if you try to do it all at once, it gets a little confusing. Are you with me on that? So deal with the amplitude and the stretching and compression first. And then draw, draw that one and then shift it. So here's what I mean by that. The first thing I know, it's going up to 3 and down to negative 3. The next thing I know, you, you need to know the period. How much is the period? Okay, so over here I'm going to put a pi, and that's going to be my ending point. I know for a fact that interesting things, I use interesting things, interesting things are going to happen, which means points that we're going to, are going to be values or crossings of the x-axis, are going to happen in the middle of this interval. So this is my, my end goal is going to be this. I know I'm positive because I have no negative. It's going to go down and come back up and end right here. Does that make sense to you? That's what's going to happen. The interesting stuff is going to happen here at pi over 2, here, at pi over 4, and 
here at, what is that one? Yeah. Do you feel okay that we're going to be going up and down to three? Do you feel okay that we're going to complete a complete cycle in pi time, in the, in the interval of pi? Do you feel okay that this, we need those numbers because that's where the interesting stuff is going to happen? Yes, no? Yes. Okay. So let's figure out what this is. Remember, we haven't done the shift yet. We're just going to draw the function without the shift, and then we'll deal with the shift. We'll just move it over. Okie dokie. So let's deal with this function. If I were to ignore the shift for a second, where does it start? Three. It's either three, because it's cosine, right? It's not at zero. It's either three or negative three. In this case, which is it? Three. Definitely. You plug in zero, you're going to get three. Remember, not, not with that, though. You're ignoring that for a second. So I would start here. That means I'm going to end there. Got it. That means that what happens at pi over 2, is that a peak, a zero, or a valley? You should be able to tell me right now. It's a valley. Definitely a valley. Absolutely. It's going to be right here. What happens at pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 then? Crossing. That's our crossings. So my graph should look like... Oh, that's not bad. I got that on video, too. Look at that. That's pretty good. I feel good. Good job, Hunter. Good crowd. That's like the best one I've ever done. My gosh. Remember that. It's never going to happen again. All right? <laughs> this is it. Would you agree that this is my function without the shift? Yeah. Now, that shift, it said to the right, to the left. Which one? Wow. The left. What that means is that all we've got to do is take every key point, boom, 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 all five of those key points, shift them pi over four to the left, and then redraw it. That's all that means. So fortunately for us, we have almost all the power of fours listed, right? It's cool. We just got to make sure that this distance, that's negative power of four. You said to the left. So here's what it does. It's the same level, just shifted. Oh, boy. <laughs> I saw your confused looks. Dang it, that's my third mistake today. I'm past my quota by one for the week. I make two mistakes a week. That was it. Dang it. Okay. I know it's Monday, right? That's, that'll be my excuse, too. Uh, yes, very good. So what we're going to do is take each of these key points. We're going to shift them one interval of pi over 4 to the left, redraw. So they're going to stay at the same level, though. So this point was at 0, now it's at negative pi over 4, 3. That's right there. This point was at pi over 4, 0. Now it's at 0, 0. Are you with me on how we're doing this right now? This was at pi over 2, negative 3. Now it's at pi over 4. That's pi over 4, pi over 4 negative 3. Okay, cool. This was at 3 pi over 4. We're going to shift it pi over 4 to the left. That's now at pi over 2. This point was at pi. Pi comma three. Now it's going to be shift to pi over four to the left. That's three pi over four comma three. We've just shifted every major point to the left. That's because we have shift to the left of pi over four. If you redraw it, that'll be the purple line right now. Ah, see, I missed. Told you my graph again. We get the actual function. This was the one we copied. You can't do that if you use pencil. Ha ha ha. Uh, but this is this is our shifted over version. The purple one's the one we need to end with. Would you raise your hand if you okay with our, our shift signs? Good, all right, that's good. Did you think they were gonna be as, as nice as this? This is nice, huh? Do it this way. If you've never done this before, this is a good way to do it. Now what I do need you to do is you need to review your trig identities in the book. I, I think it's somewhere on page 36 or 37. Review those things. We're not going to be dealing with anything super, super duper hard, like some obscure ones, but the basic ones you absolutely must have, like uh, tangent equals sine over cosine. You've got to have that. You've got to have the Pythagorean one down, where sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And the derivatives of, not derivatives, that's the wrong word to use in calculus class, but the, uh, the corollaries from that, such as 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared. You need those things, okay? You also need, like, your half angle and your double angle formulas. You need the ones that say uh, sine of 2x is the same thing as 2 sine x cosine x. You need those. Okay, so, so review those. Have them in your head somewhere. Be able to use those things because we will use them when we're doing integrals and derivatives of trig functions. You need them.